Hi, welcome back to What's Up Doc. Today we're going to talk about are doctors healthy and does it really matter? What made me think about this? Well, I obviously have encountered a lot of patients over the years and day to day we try to hopefully encourage, influence, prod our patients to actually improve their health. Now, the question is, does it matter if I myself am healthy, if I'm giving a good message to a patient, if I'm educating them, or do patients look at me and think, well, you know, if you're going to tell me this, then I want to see that you're doing the same thing yourself. And I think it's a mixed subject. I don't think that there's one straightforward answer. We did a survey recently, which many of you answered, so I'm very grateful for that. A survey is not the most scientific thing that a person can do, but it is actually helpful sometimes to at least have some idea as to how people are thinking and responding. So I'm going to start with the questionnaire. Number one, if you perceived your doctor as unhealthy, would he or she have less authority or impact on your health choices? So this showed quite a dramatic response of 77% saying yes. Unbelievably, they didn't hide it from the questionnaire. It was straightforward. And the interesting thing here is that patients really do um, seem to care about how their doctor comes across in terms of their health habits. Second question. Would you change your doctor because of his or her unhealthy habits? So here it was less dramatic, um, more evenly spread, but more towards yes, 54% of people saying that they would change their doctor because of their unhealthy habits and uh, 50, well, 46%, 47% saying otherwise, no, they wouldn't. The next question, would you be less likely to listen to advice or quit smoking if your family doctor was a smoker? So here we have 58% saying yes, that they would, and 42% saying that they wouldn't. This is also interesting because obviously there is some effect that occurs from whether a doctor smokes or not, and the patient's perception. How these patients actually knew the doctor smokes, it doesn't, we didn't ask that, but the assumption is just the very fact that they somehow know this about their doctor. Maybe they're sitting there with a pack of cigarettes in their shirt or they can smell smoke on them. I don't think it matters, but the point is that the perception is there. And the last question, would you be less likely to listen or take seriously advice from your family doctor about weight loss if he or she were overweight? So the answer to this question says actually yes, they would be less likely. It's that that's with 58% versus 42% who say that they wouldn't be. Now, there was actually a study in Nature, which is well, probably the world's most prestigious scientific journal, in which this question was raised. And it showed very clearly that um, a patient who has a uh, doctor who is uh, overweight, obese, uh, is that patient is much less likely to trust that doctor, much less likely to listen to their advice, uh, specifically about um, healthy habits and also more likely to actually change doctor to another doctor. And this is actually interesting because it's also irrespective of whether the patient themselves is a healthy weight. So you could have a patient who is quite overweight and just because the doctor is also, they have the same tendencies towards listening to what that doctor has to say and also whether they stay with this doctor or whether they switch doctors. So what can we learn from this? Well, it's very easy to say that this is not very politically correct, which apparently it isn't. Um, but on the subject of politics, we'll talk about politicians for a moment. When people see politicians lying or cheating, um, doing things that seem immoral, uh, getting away with things, it lessens their um, trust in politicians in the political system and makes them more apathetic or perhaps anti to what the politician says they stand for. Same thing happens with parents and children. If a parent is sitting and telling a child to eat healthily, but they themselves don't, so the child is, is getting a mixed message. So this is not really about 
being, um, it's not about whether this is right or wrong. This is pure fundamental um, human behavior. Humans are by nature judgmental and irrational. We don't just go by what we learn and think and apparently know, but very much go by other signals and how we feel and what things are going on in our own subconscious. And I think that we need to take this into account when we examine this kind of behavior, such as the difference the, um, um, between what the doctor says and what they seem to be doing themselves. It's also an interesting subject because why would a doctor smoke? Doctors of all people know that smoking is not good for us. We know the risks and we should know them better than most people. So why does it happen? Well, there is obviously this subject known as cognitive dissonance, which means that a person may know something, they may have all the facts in front of them, but they can behave in a way that seems completely disconnected from what they know. And this is another fundamental of human nature. We have this, it's a way of survival. Doctors and smoking, well, in Italy, a few years ago, a study was done that showed unbelievably that doctors smoked about twice as much as the general population. So we're talking at numbers of 40% of doctors smoking versus 20% of the general population. In many other countries in the West, this is actually completely the opposite. Doctors smoke a lot less than the rest of the population. I'm bringing up the example of Italy because it's an example of how even with education, it's not enough to change a habit. And we need to find societal incentives. We need to look at the underlying reasons why people don't look after their health, especially doctors who you think would look after their health. And we have to consider this overall when we plan and run a health system. To get to the subject of doctors, and this is certainly no excuse, but training as a doctor is really a rigorous, straining, arduous journey that goes on for many years. It's tiring with uh, literally physically tiring and also because there's often inadequate sleep. Doctors are trained in a system to really be tougher than, than we are. And that is rarely acknowledged by the medical system and it's not expected by the patients, right? Patients expect us to be strong always. They expect us to be almost superhuman. And we, as a result of all of this, like to think of ourselves in that way as well. It's very difficult for a doctor to say, I'm not so strong or I need help. I'm going to tell you about my experience as a junior doctor in the UK. When I was first training and for quite a few years, the number of hours that we worked in a week would seem just ridiculous to any normal thinking person. A, uh, a normal week consisted of at least two 36-hour um, shifts in which we may not have slept in either shift and continued working a normal week in between. Every third week or so, we were working a weekend as well. And the weekend started on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. and finished at Monday evening at 6 p.m. Did we sleep in that time? Often hardly at all, maybe an hour here, an hour there. And we lived on coffee and chocolates that the patients brought to the wards. The total number of hours in a week like that could have easily come to around 120 hours of work, being on your feet, barely having any time to take care of yourself. And this was expected as the norm. I can go into the reasons why this was the case. Um, many of the older doctors, the more senior doctors would go on about how back in their days, they used to work even longer hours than that. But medicine has changed since then. The expectations, the level of technology, the turnover of patients, the number of beds, and also just the amount of um, new knowledge that we have to acquire the whole time has changed things very much to the detriment of having a healthy system. 
on the positive note, I am glad to say that over the years this has changed. There was something called the European Working Hours Directive, and this resulted in a dramatic drop in the number of hours and in the length of any given shift. So things are on the improvement on that side. So to summarize, I do think it's important that doctors set a healthy example towards patients. I do think that it matters. I do think that patients pay attention to these things, whether they openly admit it or even openly conscious of it. However, I think that there needs to be some caring for the doctors, both by the medical systems and also by the doctors themselves. I think that doctors need to find ways to get into healthy habits, whether it be eating healthily, not smoking, keeping alcohol to an absolute minimum, if any at all, um, sleeping enough, and also maintaining good relationships. And this is a lot to balance with a career as a doctor, I can tell you that. The other thing to say is that there perhaps should come up the subject of what psychological supervision doctors have. And this is something that I think I'll talk about in another video at a later date. So what do you think? I'd love to see you write some comments down below. I'd love to respond to those comments as I have done so for many of my other videos. And I look forward to seeing you back here at What's Up Doc again soon.